Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here, of course, in the Southern Victory mod, playing as an older, still kind of cool, Drew Durnell, also known as Jake Featherston. So, a couple comments from yesterday, including that he does look like Drew Durnell, I think he is from Alabama, but regardless, we are currently in the middle of aiding someone in a little civil war, which makes Aunt me feel honestly pretty darn good. So... Let us continue. So our goal in this episode is to... Oh, I'll cut these guys off first of all. But to just get through this and most importantly, get through this... Get up to 1940 as fast as possible. I can't speak right now apparently. Words are hard. But we have the end of the Olympic Games. Despite multiple hiccups, the Richmond Olympics has concluded without any major tragedies. The most notable event of the Games was not related to the athletics at all, but they have failed to attempt on President Drew Durnell's life by a black hot dog vendor. The would-be assassin was killed by Clarence Potter, who was a former intelligence officer who served closely with Featherston in the Great Wall. Overall, the games were a success, with the US and CS tied for the first, uh, with Germany second, and surprisingly, Quebec in third, huh? The games are, of course, concluded. The reign of Featherston is accomplished. Cool. Uh, there was another comment, apparently. Oh, yep. Featherston survives assassination attempt. Lucky bastard. Yeah, that, um... Yeah, apparently we have, at the time of this recording, the lead writer is also watching, so thank you very much for for everything you've done, I appreciate it. So, a meeting with General Stewart. After now, Colonel Potter had left his meeting with the President, and entered one of the most decorated soldiers in the Confederate, in Confederate history, Jeb Stewart II, was aging, but by his upstart or upright posture and gray, blue eyes filled with hate, he still had a fight in him. Perhaps the first sign of the direction of the meeting was when the president ordered the general to sit, much to Stewart's objections, though the president did soon get his way. From there, Featherston confronted the old general's failings, from gloating at Featherston when he seemed to be beaten a decade before to blocking Featherston and Potter's promotions based on a personal matter. At what seemed to be the end of his tirade, Featherston demanded Stewart's resignation from the army, to which Stewart responded by demanding a court-martial call on Featherston white trash and angrily defended his, uh, defending his service. Featherston responded in kind, going on a grand and profane tirade of his own. By the end, the color had drained from Stewart's face, and he conceded to resigning rather than facing complete humiliation. A give Shaw Goldman a buzz for me, will ya? And we lost good old Jeb. In a meeting with Potter, the Olympics could have perhaps gone worse for both men and seated at the presidential desk. President Featherston had survived an attempt on his laugh, and across the desk sat a man Featherston was convinced would have preferred to take the shot himself. Clarence Potter was a man who knew the president better than most, the two having served together during the Great War. Featherston considered what to do with his old acquaintance. Potter himself skillfully deflected Featherston's accusations against him with well rehearsed alibis, but the president was nonetheless open about his feelings towards Potter's excuses. Ultimately, though, the solution Featherston found him, found perhaps surprise Potter, but the officer was taken without hesitation. How how would you like to go back in the army? Colonel Potter. Yeah. I think that'd be a great thing. Let's kill off some more angry Spanish people. Yeah. Oh, what a smiley man, Alfonso, that guy. Oh, so happy. But we gotta speed the time up a little bit, because it's going to be a while before we get to conflict, and I did say we do want to use a great deal of tanks. We'll just have a very strong tank core when real conflict breaks out. Cool. And let's see, so before we go too far, we have to keep an eye on this. Um, our ultra-nationalist influence is slowly decreasing, so we do have to take some of these focus focuses up here eventually. Definitely don't want to take this one yet, just because we can't deal with more collectivism support, even though I do want to rush establish the cast. So let's do nationalize the railways. It is foolish to leave the public utilities like railways under control of the private corporations, especially given the importance of these railroads on our economy and the movement of wartime materials. Absolutely. And we gotta really I'm gonna really make sure that we have produce enough guns. So we have 20 combat with infantry. We probably won't be able to make 40 combat with infantry before the war starts. But that would be a good goal. 40 combat with infantry with good tanks, that is key to our success. Because when America starts attacking, oh my god, America's going to go like vroom vroom to us. Oh my goodness, I, I tried it before and whew, that, that ain't easy. Not super difficult, but it ain't super easy. Let's go ahead and take these guys out. 152 political power. <clears throat> Let's see, Koenig. Mm, propaganda, I like that. We can wait though. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna get Patton. Cost 250. That's a lot. 
That's a whole lot. We could do this. We could arrest some. Oh, we might arrest some. Arrest? Arrest some soldiers. Yeah, let's arrest some uh, commie supporters. Yeah, I think that'd be best. It's what the country needs. Yeah, head on over here and destroy them, folks. Good. Get just a tiny bit more army XP. We got some mechanical. Mechanical? Mechanical computing. Very good, very good. We might need some more excavation eventually, but we'll hold off on that for now. Uh, ooh, you know what? Where we're headed, we can ignore carrier fighter ones and carrier naval bomber ones because if we research these planes fast enough, we should do okay. We should. I do want more ship stuff going. Oh, we need better artillery. We're doing our land auction. Ship tank barrel wise, we're doing. Eh, okay. We're going to need some field hospitals though. Radio, very good. Grab some of that. And then grab some of that. Going out. Good. Nationalized railways. I love these focuses. I love it. 35 days. I mean, whoever made the decision to have 35 day focuses, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And introduce the second three year plan. We need to expand our public works projects. There are still many places that need vital infrastructure, like dams and railroads, and we could easily expand our already existing projects to include these. Given the success of the first three-year plan, the government has chosen to renew it with greater objectives and funding than before. Wow, we get quite a bit more resources. I love it. I love it. And a whole host of great places to do it in. Cool. And even though these tanks aren't looking super great, that's okay. I still love them. And we still love them. Especially under Daddy Patton and Courtney. Alright, Courtney, you you fella. You funny fella. Funny fella. And we're... I'm definitely trying to expand our uh, industrial capacities as much as possible because they're pretty pretty necessary for what's going to happen later on. They're really going to be real necessary. We're going to build up Tennessee as well, especially once we might be able to get a public site to get more territory under us. Cool. I don't know why you guys are focusing there. This is much more important to get first than this tile. Because you just cut them guys off and you'll be you'll be winning. Cool. Uh, delay doctrine, always nice to have. Man, they are literally just sitting there to die. And they going and they did. Very beautiful. Going ahead and help them out. Madrid is surrounded. This war is not going to last for very much longer. And I love it. Cool. Uh, go ahead, how about over here? Oh, so Al Smith elected president, huh? After over four years? Hmm. All right, cool. So people march on the streets. A great crowd of people march through the streets of the capital today, seeking better living conditions, dignity, and work. The protest was peaceful and did not trigger any violent act. We do our best. I keep noticing that our factory count keeps decreasing. Oh yeah. Oh, look at oh, the Germans were in there and we killed off the Germans in there. Actually, come over here first so we don't attack over the river. That's never a good idea, especially since we are lacking, lacking tanks. Ugh. Establish the cast. The bright young minds of this great nation need a place to truly make an impact with their talents. And the nation needs them as well. The establishment of the Confederate Academy of Sciences. That sounds amazing. Will give these people a great place to put their talents to the benefit of their nation. Absolutely. Heinz Guderian. Ah, oh, tank on tank action, huh? Or just, I guess, motorized. The last division defending the Spanish capital is not a Spanish division at all. It is a German division that has failed. Beautiful, my friends. We have seen the glory. Or at least now the Spanish have seen the glory. Now, you guys are fighting over here. National Unity Front. This might be worth helping out. But let's just say that I practiced this off screen and I did not win. <laughs> so I'm going to leave him alone. I, I really don't care about getting involved. We only have 2% rule tension. It's a Chinese, Chinese war. It's it's a thing to do. And actually, I didn't even know this. But look at this Afghanistan. When's the last time Afghanistan had a port? I don't know. I literally have no idea when the last time Afghanistan had a port. Usually they're just stuck over here in Harat and Kabul. And they don't own Keta, Peshawar, or Baluchistan. Or Hep eh, they own that one. But yeah, when's the last time they actually had a port? An Afghani Navy? Sounds kind of wild. Sounds kind of cursed, actually. Look, that's okay, though. Cool, let's come back up here and do increase security detachment. In light of recent events, we must protect the life of President Featherston tenfold. We will invest further funds in the security measures for the President's public appearances. Oh, yeah, we got... Hey, fifth research slot, too. Now that's going to come right in handy. Real right in handy. And I want to maximize the effectiveness of our carriers because hopefully that's what's going to make us uh, achieve... Victory. Maybe not a final victory, but a victory. A good victory. And I had these guys train as well. So we're out of plane. So be it. Whatever. Uh, ooh, do we have any extra new ships? We do not. That's unfortunate. That's okay. So now, this is a time where we're going to speed as 
fast as we can, while well, reading a couple events here and there and some focuses, to uh, the greater future. We'll put it like that. The greater future. And we're almost setting up. Time for this. Thank you, Georgie. I almost never choose the individuals that cost 250 political power, but regardless, we got a hurricane hit the south. Have you ever lived in the south? You know this happens every year. A hurricane hit the southern part of the Confederate States yesterday, last night, causing serious damage in several locations. The president said this morning that these are difficult times that we are not exempt from facing, and that only united can we succeed as a nation, thus also taking advantage of the opportunity to confront the northern states due to the tensions between the two nations. We will come... I'll come from this? We will come out from this. Increase security detachment, very good. We could get more stability, which would be great. But, uh, ooh, army purge. Let's get through that one as fast as possible. So, let's order a <clears throat> black tax. The assassin who almost took the life of the president came from a long line of traitors to this country. There must be some form of repayment to our <clears throat> white uh, brethren. And to achieve that goal, we will institute a $20 tax upon the uh, black population. I wonder how far I can get away with saying all this stuff on YouTube. Oh, whatever. Who cares? Right? Who cares? Uh, radio detection. Cool. 37. Happy 1937, my friends. Let's do that. Cool. I just don't want to get kicked off <laughs> of this platform. That's all. Further recover from the Great Depression. We do want to end that, which looks really, really bad, which does hurt us. Uh, good. We got level four lines gone. Yeah, we're going to spend a ton of time just building stuff up. And once we run out of places to build factories, we're going to build a ton of infrastructure. A ton. Do you think the South is nothing but just rural places? Oh, it's going to be rural places and great infrastructure eventually. Let me tell you what. Mm. Look at all these building slots we have. In base game vanilla, or just most, or almost every mod that has the United States in it, has the states as whole pieces. I love that the developers broke up the United States, which sounds weird as an American, but you know what? That was the right choice. That was definitely the right choice. Uh, let's see. Purge the army. The army has been not but a thorn in the side of the Confederacy since the arist aristocratic class took it over. Those unloyal to the current administration must and will be tried for their treason. Very good. Cool. 59%. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, turn to... You know what? It's just... It's my deal. You know, in any mod, I just love building roads. I love it so much. Uh, 37. Come back over here. Yeah. Machine tools. Lovely machine tools. Now, did I miss a spot? Thanks for a spot. I don't think so. Cool. So who's this Owl Smith? Look at that flag. That American flag looks really cool. And I did click on Utah, so that's actually the Mormon flag, Deseret. Beautiful. But not as beautiful as this one. Which is kind of... Oh, man. That smile. I'm getting some creeper vibes from this man. Mm, I don't like this smile. Mm, what do you think? What do you think of the smile? you think this looks okay? Hmm. He definitely looks... Political, I will put it like that. Al Smith, hmm, I don't know if I can trust him. Probably can't. He's an American. Uh, new passbook. Uh, I'm going to wait just a little bit. Let's, how about we do establish front company. So, though the Treaty of Trenton forbids the development of significant military industry within our borders, our current plans for the nation require us to rebuild our military. A solution has been found, however. By building up and supporting camp companies who produce materials that could be used for war and or could easily transition to war production, we can circumvent these restrictions and rearm our sails. And just get that sweet, sweet 10% more stability, even though we can only fill it up 4% more. But that's totally okay. Totally okay. And actually, uh, I want to do this thing right before... Oh, actually, whoa, hold on. Automatic split-offs are cool. Carrier operations. Oh, let's just let time go on. Go and grab that. Like I said before, we want to have the best navy in the world. Because even though we have, it looks like we have a big navy, the Americans, I would not discount their navy at all. Just saying. Yeah, we need to make some planes. So we really do not want to discount the American navy because it's it's big as well. Okay, it's it's large. But actually, let's see how big it is. Socialist, moderate socialist. Hmm. Bunch of crazies, if you ask me. Establish front companies. Oh, yeah, let's do that one. Liquidate unprofitable assets. We have many assets that we have no use for and that are just collecting dust in the warehouses. To help with our budget issues, we could sell off these assets to companies willing to pay a fair price. A fair, fair price. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Looking pretty nice. It's only May 12th, 1937. And actually, with this mod, I think time moves on to maybe just a little bit faster. Maybe not. It seems like it's going pretty quick for us. I hate to be the Ukrainian state. Why is this demilitarized? 
Oh, actually, I've not taken out taken out the flag yet. That looks, that looks really good. Oh, the tax, huh? Huh? Oh, they're independence. They're part of the. Uh, oopsie, what the heck? That what they call the quadruple alliance. Which was something I was going to ask you guys as well. So, because we are on historical, and let me double check this real quick. Anything here, industrial concerns? We might do industrial concerns. I might, it is 1937. I might just choose better fighters, even though we are using close air support. Uh, ships. Naval research speed. Uh, is that worth it? Is that worth it? Less armor. 15% of 5 isn't really that much. Uh, but you only get more range and more deck size. Ooh, more range and deck size. That's not bad. You know what? I never choose Newport new shipping. <sighs> Let's go and do that. Why not? What was I saying before? I can't remember. But we're going to get some more factories, which is nice. Nationalize some stuff. We're going to lose some political... We're going to lose consumer goods, which is not good. So let's do new passbook checkpoints. In order to keep the Reds in check, we must know where they are and intend to be. To further this, we must increase the checkpoints in majority uh, <clears throat> African-American areas. We'll put it like that this time. And now I remember what I was going to say. So because of the way we've chosen, we've chosen Featherston as the rightful leader of our handsome young nation. We could choose to either reaffirm our Entente ties or revive the Golden Circle. Now, I love to see eventually to do the Golden Circle, but I'm thinking in this campaign we're going to reaffirm Entente ties, mostly because we are on historical, and I did read in the wiki that I think that they went with, you know, the UK and the French, which is cool. Now, and I do want to save... Um, the Golden Circle for a Vicky 2 campaign eventually, as well as when I come back to the mod and see if they ever updated it. Oh, sure, they probably will. And just do it for good fun. So, I think we'll probably go with the Entente for now. Uh, let's actually, let's grab some synthetic oil refineries. That's actually really good. Oops, let time go on too fast. Oh, well. We got a little bit of air XP. Might as well use it while we got it, right? One, two, one, two, one, two. Good. Uh, naval stuff. Um, sonar isn't bad. Let's grab this one. That'd be good. Yeah, we got a lot of naval XP, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Go ahead. 99%. Mm, that's not enough. Never enough. Never enough. Let's see. We have 14% collectivists, huh? I'm sorry, but if you a commie, you're going to be put down. Nice. Confederate Army, which I'm completely ignoring right now. Cold personality. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes, yes. The deeds of Featherston should be spread as far and as wide as possible. The people should hold nothing but admiration for the man who brought the nation back from the brink time and time again. From his service in the Great War to his crusade against the Reds, his life will be canonized in the history books and in the lives of all citizens. He is what they call a casual strongman. Plus 25% political power. That would be great. You know what? We can do that extra 25% political power. That's right, we can arrest Cubans and Communists, the two C's. Well, mostly just Cuban Socialists. Cubans are cool. But the Cuban Socialists, not so much. Now, we do want to keep in mind, now that I think of Cuba, and I see this little Cuban, revolutionary Cuban flag here, that there, there might be a chance. Oh, actually, Florida has its own flag, too? Ah, that's awesome. But there might be a chance, eventually, that we might see Mississippi, but more likely, a new Africa prop up. Especially down here in the Mississippi Delta. Whew. We definitely do not... Oh, and Louisiana. We definitely don't want any sort of <clears throat> rebellion happening if we're in the middle of a war. That would not be very, very good. So, let's establish the Calf. It is clear that the disorganized and often conflicting unions of the CSA have little power or influence, failing to provide the same representation and power to Confederate workers than to their northern counterparts. It has been decided that all major Confederate unions will unite into a single entity, the Confederate American Workers Front, analogous to the IWW in the U.S. This will do something and make us and our workers more prosperous. Now, this sounds very, very similar to what a certain nation did. <clears throat> in the 1930s, our timeline, that was a little aggressive. A little aggressive for what it did. Just, you know, I can't put my finger on it which country did that in our timeline, but it sounds somewhat similar to what that group did. Hmm. One union for all? Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Regardless, I still love this thing about Afghanistan. They have a port. And what mods do does Afghanistan have a port? That's fun. I love it. Thank you, my developers. I'm not Afghani at all. 
but I'm sure the Afghans appreciate it. Oh, delay doctrine. I love a little delay doctrine in our life. Cool. Oh, oh, look at that. Three dockyards. We might want to make some more. So we got that one carrier done. Uh, now this. We got enough army XP. Let's see. Rapid fire guns. Live cruiser batteries. Oh, we got number two done. That's nice. That's real nice. Rapid fire. Uh, no, no, that's not good stuff. Yeah, we want to make sure that... Ooh, actually, is it this one that we wanted, or was it the other one? No, it's definitely this one, just because... Yeah, that's... That is, a uh, level one. I don't I don't mess with level ones if we got level twos. No, no, no. And we have also have hydrophones. Only level two of that. So that's fine. Level three cruiser armor. Now that... This... Sure, we have a little bit less speed, a little bit less HP, actually quite a bit. And um, we'll use... Uh, let's supply. We, do, we get, lose all of our heavy attack, but we get more light attack and anti-air, which is actually probably the most important thing in my opinion right now. Way less anti-air. Good. Now we're going to really focus these guys. Make only one more, because we're going to need quite a... Well... Hmm. You know what? Hmm. Carriers. Oh, establish a call. Cool. Nationalize natural resources. The need for raw materials has become immense, and as such, we need to nationalize key industries to, so that we may have these required resources. Very good. Now, let's see, for here, we missed this. We need better radar before I ch touch that at all. Army purge, good. Them effects are done. I don't like seeing that. I don't like seeing that. That makes me unhappy. And no one wants to be unhappy. Cool. I don't want to make this yet. Just keep building up more factories first, and put it right there. Cool. Please, please, please. Oh, hold on. They burst into the bottom. Uh, we just need tons of civilian factories now. Tons, tons, tons. We gotta produce, 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 because we're gonna be... We could potentially be out-produced by the northern states. And them's a, there's a lot of northern states. They got way more northern states than what we got. So we gotta be even better than what they think they can do. We have to be the best version of ourselves, which hopefully will be enough to beat the enemy. But you never know. You never know. 37, 37, what are we going to do for 37? Hmm, artillery. Now that's quick, just because we got to keep move, 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 move. Oh, uh, communists, aluminum. Uh, what are we missing? Rubber? Uh, it's not really worth trading. Only four. Nationalized natural resources. Go die bombing. An autocratic administration. Oh, autarkic. Yeah, autarkic. So to be f truly free from foreign influence, we must not rely upon foreign alliances to help maintain our independence from them Yanks. Cool. Very good. Cool. I'm going to go and grab this one. Just so that we have a good amount of air doctrine done before we even get into any sort of conflict. Ah, and you know what I love? Close air support ass kickers. Hmm. Now that is perfect. Cool. Thank y'all. Got some hearts. Some interwar fighter hearts. Ain't worth much, but that's alright. They have our hearts. Cool. Alright, what's next? Uh, fighters, 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 fighters. Uh, cool, I love them subs. Uh, that's pretty useful. Torpedoes. We could, we're going to get some of this eventually. 37. It's almost 38, so we got to keep an eye on that. Uh, thinking in my head. Thinking in my head. Just grab that. We're probably going to make battleships later on, if possible. 1940 battleship, so just preparing ourselves for later on. Do we have anything here? Yes! Uh, oh, it's a carrier! The carrier has been done. Nice. We have no carrier planes, though. Hmm. That's okay. I did say we, we were going to wait on that, so. Cool. Let's go ahead and move over here. And the final economic recovery. I just want to finish and get rid of this. 5% is not good for us. So, we have overcome the depression and can now, at least, at last, move forward with other plans for the future. Look at what uh, Drew Dernil did. He has the perfect recipe for economic recovery and stabilization. I'm just very, very worried about our front line, that's all. Just incredibly worried about it, because... Them American boys, they going to have a massive army. Trust me. A huge army. Cool. Mm, region wide. We might do region wide stuff. I might just go ahead. Yeah, I'll probably go ahead and increase our conscription level because we are lacking manpower. And we can't be slowed down because of a lack of men. Ooh. Black Gorilla Rebellion. We might need to do that. Yeah. But God. You know, I said it before earlier in this video. I love these really quick focuses it's just you're in the game so much more the mod thank you guys thank y'all and how about we just revoke some citizenship so after the great wall 
Soldiers of African American descent, many of whom had been Reds just months before, were given full citizenship by the traitorous Whig government. We must strip these traitors of the citizenship to rectify this grievous error. And get some political power out of it, too. I love political power. Confederated American Workers Front, we get a total of 1.9. God dang, 1. I can throw communists and Cuban socialists in prison all the time, then. Awesome. Oh, actually, it's going. No, that's progressives. Uh, 5%. Commies first, gave it a day, and then socialists. Because you don't want to do them the same day, or that wouldn't be very good, I think. Hey, happy 1938, though, my friends. Happy 1938. President's National Dis Discourse. Today, the president gave a speech to all his followers, marking the steps to follow for future years. Always seeking the greatness of the Confederate States of America before the world. No one will go hungry. Well, I am in charge, said the leader to a large crowd that had been waiting for his words since the wee hours of the morning. Glory to the Confederation. Woo! And there, two days. I mean, I love. I just slow down my speech sometimes by doing this, but we're gonna go ahead and do prepare to repeal them seven words. The seven words have stalled the will of the people for too long. If the people want six more years of Featherston, then we will make sure they have six more years. Oh, more ultra nationalism support as well. Into war artillery, great. Uh, come over here. Get get that radar so that we can actually build radars. Radar, little radar on our ships. So we can throw them on our carriers, too. Because that'll come in handy. Uh, arresting them Cuban socialists? That's really weird. Just just Cuba has socialists. Everywhere else we have communists. But everywhere, but Cuba is just known for socialists here. Ooh, we have the United Kingdom, huh? Cool, 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 cool. Ah, nice. That's, that'll come in handy later on. Let's grab some of this stuff so we're not behind at all on infantry stuff. That's really important, too. Oh, yeah, we have enough of this. 38. Go grab it. Uh, what did I grab? Infantry. That's actually really important for now. That's good. Still lacking just four. Just minus four. That's fine. Oh, yeah. We're still building ourselves up. Northern Virginia would be bad to build up right now, too. Uh, at least we have full production on civilian factories. Good. Good. The fate of Louisiana. Huey P. Long has been a thorn in our side for years. Its political machine in the great state of Louisiana has made it impossible for us to win any meaningful percentage of the populace. We must take immediate action, though we must pick our course carefully, for it could have dire consequences. Preparing to repeal them seven words. Few times in our history has the Confederate Constitution, one of the greatest founding documents produced by man, been amended to make for a more perfect confederacy. The first such amendment was made to end the outdated and weighted practices, uh, practice of slavery once it had become a burden rather than the backbone of our nation. Now, once again, though, politicians gather in state legislatures to accumulate the necessary votes to amend our great constitution. The people of this great nation no longer see the need for a hindrance to our president, such as term limits. Once put in place to ensure that the president would not abuse his power, they are no longer needed to protect our nation from the greatest president in our history. If the people wish for six small years under Featherston and the Freedom Party, they shall have it, and no dated clause shall stand in their way. Gather the representatives. This is going to be... <clears throat> Some fun times, as some might say. Oh man, we definitely need some motorized. Holy cow. Yeah. I could make some military factories now, but I do like building infrastructure in Northern Virginia. That'll come in handy as we're building up even more factories. Yeah. And Central Virginia, too. Yeah, that'd be nice. So we keep a four and then one. I think that's pretty good. We got so much naval XP. That's so good. I got a week left. Okay, now. Here we long. I love your flag, Louisiana. But please, please, do not rebel. Do what you need to do to keep Louisiana safe. Oh, and did I throw this over here? Did I throw this over here? Yeah, I did. The screen's not very good, but that's okay. Cool, so we're done with that. We're done with the economy already by 1938. It's perfect now. How about we go on the world stage? Ever since the Great War, the Confederacy has laid prostrate at the feet of the conquerors, powerless to take part in world affairs. No longer, though, the time has come for us to once again step out onto the world stage and remind everyone we ain't down and out yet. No, no, no. You know what? I love my national pastime. We're going to arrest some more communists. And once we're done with that, we're going to arrest some Cubans. So, Huey Long has been a thorn in our side for years now. Now he presents the last vestige of credible opposition to our government. We must take him off the table one way or another. Our first plan is to send Anne Culleton, aristocratic heiress and avid, although at times unreliable, supporter of our government to Baton Rouge to attempt to negotiate a deal with Long. Should these talks fail, we shall be sure to have a alternative means to bring the state in line. 
So, but unfortunately, we will see the fruit of our labors tomorrow. But before we go, I do want to ask you one question. We have a lot of civilian factories, so we should maybe create an intelligence agency. What would be a good Confederate States of America intelligence agency that could bring information to us? Let me know of the name in the comments below. Regardless, though, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you all tomorrow as we're going to stare down them northern states real menacing like. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.